Today we're going to be learning about integers. So you're going to start off by looking at what integers are. Integers are numbers that can be represented by the symbol Z. They include all of the numbers that we've dealt with so far. So all of the whole numbers from 0 up through 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, all the way up to infinity. Then we've also got integers that include what we call negative numbers. They are the numbers that come before 0. So here we've got negative 1, which is 1 below 0. Then we've got negative 2, which is 2 below 0. We've got negative 3, which is 3 below 0, or 3 less than 0. We've got negative 4, which is 4 less than 0, and so on. So they can go down to, ne to negative infinity. So these are our integers. They go all the way from negative infinity up to positive infinity, including all of our whole numbers like this and our negative numbers not including any fractions or anything. Okay, so those are our integers. Now, integers come into daily life. So let's have a look at some examples of integers that we find in daily life. So when you're looking at a weather forecast, you can see temperature that is sometimes predicted to be something like negative 5 degrees Celsius or something. So it's important to know what that means. So first of all, let's have a look at a normal 5 degrees Celsius, just uh, where something that you would know. So 5 degrees Celsius, what that means is it's 5 degrees above freezing. Okay, then you get 0 degrees Celsius. Now this is freezing point. In other words, this is the temperature at which water will freeze. Okay, so then you'll start getting things like frost and snow and so on. Okay, so freezing point, that's where water freezes. Then you also have negative 5 degrees Celsius as a possibility and other negative numbers as well, just like you have other positive numbers as well. Okay, so what negative 5 degrees Celsius means is that you have 5 degrees below freezing. Okay, so that's what those temperatures mean. Obviously, as we go above zero, it gets warmer and warmer and warmer the higher we go. And as we go below zero, it's getting colder and colder and colder the lower that we go. Okay, so that's temperature. Now let's have a look at another example, and that is with money. If you look at your bank balance and you have 100 Rand, then what that means is that you have 100 Rand available that you can spend. It's your money. Okay. If you have a balance of zero Rand, what that means is you're broke. You have no money. Okay. But if you have a bank balance of negative 100 Rand. What that means is you owe the bank money. Okay, so in other words, you bought something on credit. You used overdraft and you bought something with money that you didn't actually have enough when you were buying. You didn't have enough money to actually pay for what you were buying. So you borrowed money from the bank and now you owe that money back to the bank. So this is actually worse than being broke. It means that you have even less than no money because even when you do get money, you're going to have to pay the bank back, which means that money is not even going to be yours. It's going to be the bank's. Okay, so you have a, pos a possibility of having a, a negative amount of money where you actually are in debt. You owe money. Okay, so those are just a couple of examples of integers in daily life. We also have other times that integers come into daily life as well. Okay, now we're going to go and have a look at an example where in this picture over here, you can see that you've got some steps. Here we've got the ground floor. As you walk up the steps, you're walking up towards the first floor. And as you walk down the steps, you're walking towards the basement. Okay, so 
uh, over here, we are going to see if you start on different steps where you end up depending on what direction you're walking. But just let's have a look at this. So this is over here, the ground floor is zero. That is our zero point over there. So the step for ground floor is step zero. As we go up the steps, you can see that they are num numbered one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So as we go higher and higher and higher away from zero, our step numbers go up from one to two to three to four to five to six to seven. Then as we go below zero, below the ground floor, then our steps are numbered minus one, minus two, minus three. So this is one step below the ground floor. This is two steps below the ground floor. Here we have three steps below the ground floor and so on. Okay, so if you start on step negative two and you walk up five steps. So over here, we're starting on step negative two, which is this one, it's two steps below the ground floor or below zero. And we walk up five steps, so that's plus five. Up means we're going plus. Okay, so we're going to go one, two, three, four, five. Where do we end up? We end up on step three, which is three steps above the ground floor. So that's one, two, three over there above zero. So you end up on step three. Then if you start on step three, so if you're starting over here and you go down seven steps or you go minus seven, so minus means in the negative direction towards the basement. Then we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we end up on step minus four over here. It is four steps below the ground floor or below zero. So here you end up on negative four. Okay, so now I'm going to give you a chance to do some of these yourself. The same diagram, same situation, but you're going to be starting on different steps and walking in different directions for different distances. And I'm going to give you one minute to work on this. Okay, you should be done with that by now. So let's go through that example. So if you start on step negative three over here, that's three steps below the ground floor or below zero, and you walk up three steps, then you're going to go one, two, three, and you end up on ground floor, on the ground floor, which is zero. So that is where you should end up over there. Okay, the next one, if you start on step two, so that's over here, and you walk down six steps. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. So we went from two minus six and we ended up over here on step minus four or negative four. That is four steps below zero. So that is what you should have got for this one over here. Then the next one, if you start on step negative five, that's this one over here, it's five steps below zero or the ground floor and you walk up 10 steps. We're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So you end up on step five. So we started five steps below zero and we end on five steps above zero. So there we went from minus four, minus five, and we plus 10. The next one, we had, we're starting on minus four and we're going to walk down two steps. So we're going to go from minus four, minus two. We need to go one, two. 
So here we have minus 6 now. So we started 4 steps below 0 and we went a further 2 steps down and we ended up 6 steps below 0. So that is minus 6. So that's what you should have got for those ones over there. Right, now we're going to look at comparing integers. Now it's important for you to know how integers are in comparison to each other, what size they are in comparison to each other. So in order to be able to do that, what you need to be able to do is um, see how they look on a number line. Okay, so here we've got our number line. And on the number line, you can see we've got in the middle, 0. And then on the right of 0, we've got all of our positive integers. And on the left of 0, we've got all of our negative integers. Everything that is further to the right is greater than anything that is further to the left. Okay, so what we're going to do in these two examples over here is we are going to replace the star with a less than or a greater than sign so that the, that the statements are true. So over here I've got the number 3 and the, minus, the number minus 2. So 3 is over here and minus 2 is over here. So if I look at where they are on the number line in comparison to each other, 3 is further to the right than minus 2, which means that 3 is greater than minus 2. So over here I've got 3 is greater than negative 2. Okay, then this one over here I've got minus 5 over here. And I've got minus 1. Now, minus 5 is further to the left than negative 1, which means that negative 5 is less than negative 1. Okay, so over here I can say negative 5 is less than negative 1. Okay, so that is what you're going to be doing for the next example. I'm going to give you some questions to work on again. You're going to be replacing the stars in each of these questions with a less than or a greater than sign to make sure that the statements are true. Okay, so I'm going to give you one minute, two minutes rather, to work on these examples. Okay, you should be done with that by now, so let's go through those examples. So for question A, you've got the numbers negative 2 and 6. Now if you look on the number line at negative 2, you'll see that it is further to the left than 6, which means that negative 2 is less than 6. For question B, we've got 7 and negative 3. So here, 7, you'll see on the number line, is further to the right 
than negative 3. So we can say that 7 is greater than negative 3. For question C, we've got negative 4 and negative 9. Now, negative 4, you'll see, is further to the right than negative 9. So negative 4 is greater than negative 9. And then the last one, question D, you have negative 8 and negative 6. So on the number line, you'll see that negative 8 is further to the left than negative 6, which means that negative 8 is less than negative 6. Okay, so now we need to go and look. So now we know how to do comparing. So now we're going to go and do arranging of integers. So now we can we know how to see if one number is more or less than another number. We also now need to be able to put them in order from less or from smallest to biggest or from biggest to smallest. You need to know that ascending means from smallest to biggest and descending means from biggest to the ascending is from smallest to biggest and descending is from biggest to smallest. I'm not sure if that's what I said. Okay, right. So arranging integers, we're going to do an example. Our first example over here, we have we are going to arrange the numbers negative 5, negative 9, 3, 0, and 1 in ascending order. So ascending, we said, is from smallest to biggest. So we first are going to look at what those numbers are and we're going to find the smallest one out of all those numbers. So the smallest one is the number negative 9. So I'm going to write that one down first. Then my next smallest number is negative 5. The next one is negative 1. Then I've got 0 and finally Three. So as we write them in order from smallest to biggest, in ascending order, we should get negative 5 ne or negative 9, negative 5, negative 1, 0, and 3. Okay, so now you're going to do a couple yourself. In this exercise, you're going to be doing both of these. You're going to rewrite these ones in ascending order and these ones in descending order. Okay, so I'm going to give you two minutes to work on this. Okay, you should be done with that, so let's go through those answers. So for question A, you had the numbers 8, negative 6, 2, negative 3, and negative 10. And you have to rewrite those in ascending order, so from smallest to biggest. So our smallest number in that list is negative 10. Then the next one is negative 6. Then we have negative 3. 
then we have 2 and finally we have 8. So for question A you should have you should have got negative 10, negative 6, negative 3, 2, 8. Question B we had the numbers negative 1, 6, negative 8, 10 and negative 2 and you had to rewrite them in descending order. Now descending order means biggest to smallest so we're going to go from our biggest number which is 10 then we have 6 then we have negative 1 then negative 2 and finally negative 8 so for B you should have got 10 6 negative 1 negative 2 and negative 8 as your answer there okay now we're going to go on to counting in integers now counting is something that won't be new to you but we are now going to extend our counting into the negative numbers as well okay so let's do an example in this example we are going to, we are going to count for we are going to count forwards in ones from negative six to two okay so first of all We're going to start at negative 6 and as we count and as we count forwards in ones we are going to go up one every time but because we're in the negative numbers as we go up one the actual number part of it is going to look like it's decreasing as we go closer and closer to zero because remember this is six away from zero in the negative direction so as we go up we're going closer and closer to zero so we're going to get to negative 5, then negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, then 0, and now we're going to go 1 and 2. So as you're counting up from negative 6, it looks the numbers look like they're getting smaller, but actually it's because they are the numbers that are below 0, and as we're going towards 0, those numbers we're getting closer and closer and closer to 0. And these numbers, remember, tell us how far they are away from zero. So we've got negative six going up to two, counting in ones. Okay, our next example, we're going to be counting backwards in twos from four to negative 14. Okay, so we're going to start at four and we're going to count down in twos. So we go down to two and then zero, and now we're going to go down below zero. So two less than zero is negative two. Then two less than negative two is negative four. And then we have negative six, and negative eight, negative 10, and negative 14. So that's what you would get when you're counting backwards in twos from four to negative 14. Okay, now you're going to do a couple yourself. Okay, so I'm going to give you two minutes to work on this.
Okay, let's go through those answers. So for question A, you have to count forwards in threes from negative 12 to 21. So we're going to start on negative 12 and then we're going to go up three. Now, as we, because we're on a negative number, as we go up, we're going closer to zero, which means that the number part of it, this part over here, is actually going to look like it's going down. Okay, so it's going to be going from negative 12 to negative nine, because now we're closer to zero than we were before. Okay, then we're going to go to negative six, and then negative three, and then we hit zero. And now we can go and carry on going up, and now it's going to just be normal counting by threes. So that's what you should have got when you're counting forwards in threes from negative 12 to 21. Okay, question B, you had to count backwards in fives from 13 to negative 32. So we start on 13 and we're counting backwards. So we're going to go down to eight and then down to three by subtracting five each time. And then we go to go down, we're going to go past zero so now if we go down past zero, it's going to go down three to get to zero and then down two more to get our full five. And that means we're going to then be on minus two. Okay, and then we're going to carry on going from there. We're going to go down another five and that gives us minus seven. And then down another five is negative 12. Then we have negative 17, then negative 22 then negative 27, and then finally negative 32. So that's what you should have had for counting backwards in fives from 13 to 32. Okay, so that's how you do counting forwards and backwards. You also need to know how to carry on a pattern that has been given to you. So in this case, you've been given a number sequence, negative 23, 19, neg or negative 23, negative 19, negative 15, and then it's supposed to continue. And you are asked to determine the next five numbers in this sequence, okay? So, so far we have got negative 23, negative 19, and negative 15. So first, what we need to do is identify what is actually happening in this number sequence. So from negative 23 to negative 19, the, what's happening over here is the 23 is changing to, to 19, that's a difference of four, okay? So we know that it's changing by four, but now is it going up four or is it going down four? It was negative 23 and now it is negative 19. So it's going closer to zero from a negative number, so going closer to zero, which means that we are actually going up by four. So to go from negative 23 to negative 19, we are actually counting forwards in fours over here. And then we're going to count over here, we're going to see if it does the same thing. So negative 19 to negative 15, the difference between 19 and 15 again is four. And again, it's going from 19 to 15, they're both negative. So because they're both negative and the, ne the 19 is further below zero than the 15, it means that we are going up Four. We are increasing by four. So we need to continue doing that same pattern. Okay, so our next number in the pattern is going to be four more than negative 15, but it's not going to be 19 because remember we're going closer to zero. So it's actually going to be negative 11. And then we get four again, difference is negative seven. And then we're going to go again four, that gives us negative three. Now from negative three, so now so far we've done one, two, three. We still need to do two more. Okay, so we're going to be going up another four. Now from negative three, if I go up three, that will get me to zero. But I need to go up four, so I'm going to go one more than that. So that's going to get me to one. And then I'm going to go up one more time, another four, and that gives me five. So my last or my next five numbers in the sequence are negative 11, negative 7, negative 3, 1, and 5. Okay, so now you're going to do a couple yourself. Okay, so you've got question A. You have to find the next five numbers in the sequence 6, negative 4, negative 14. And B, you have to find the numbers in the sequence negative 8, negative 2, and 4. So I'm going to make this big for you so you can see it. 
and I'm going to give you three minutes to work on this one. Okay, let's go through those answers. So for question A, you had 6 and then minus 4. 6 minus 4 and minus 14. And you have to find the next five numbers in that pattern. Okay, so first of all, we have to identify what is happening as we go from 6 to minus 4. So as we go from 6 to 0, we go down 6. And then from 0 down to minus 4 is another 4. So we've gone down 6 and we've also gone down 4. So altogether we have gone down by 10. And then let's just check over here. From minus 4 to minus 14, it's also a difference of 10. And we're going further below 0, which means we are going in a negative direction. So it's minus 10 and then minus 10. So we need to keep on doing the same thing for the next five numbers. So over here, from minus 14, it's going to be negative 24 then negative 34, then negative 44, then negative 54, and finally negative 64. So that's one, two, three, four, five terms that we have now added to our pattern. Okay, so that's question A. Then question B, you had negative 8, negative 2, and 4. So first we have to identify what is happening in this pattern. So to go from negative 8 to negative 2, we are already on a negative number, and we are 8 below 0, and then we end up only 2 below 0. So we've actually gone up, and the difference between 8 and 2 is 6. We've gone up by 6. Okay, so then let's just check that that's still happening over here. So from negative 2 to 4, 
it's going from a negative number so, to a positive number, so it is definitely going up, and then it's going up from negative 2 to 0, which is 2, and then it's going up from 0 to 4, which is 4, so altogether that gives us a, an increase of 6. So we are going to be adding 6 each time. So let's go and continue doing that. So we're on 4 over here, so we're going to go up 6, that gives us 10, then up 6 again is 16, then up 6 again we get 22, and then we next, next get 28, and finally we end on 34 as we add 6 for the last time. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms that we have added to this pattern. Okay. So that is basically just an introduction to integers. We're going to next be going on to things like adding integers, subtracting integers, doing calculations, and so on. But for now, just it's important for you to know what integers are, how they work, what you actually what it means when you see that minus in front of a number, um, and how to know when some numbers are bigger or smaller than other numbers, and, and just being able to play around with them a bit. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.